Okay, welcome back. Yeah, um, so thank you once again, Samuel, for that. I, I really uh, hope that helped you to get some um you know uh, a, a, a bit of an understanding a glimpse of uh, you know how this works i just want to uh, bring about a question uh, not a question i think it was an observation that christopher made christopher you made an excellent observation um uh, so what what he's written christopher's written the question that should have been asked is what are the areas that samuel is critical of in the two churches something maybe Uh, some things may some things may be wrong in these churches. This may not be a father-son relationship problem, but Samuel sees things that are going wrong in the church and is unable to tell his father uh, who is in leadership position in the church. Okay. Um, now, uh, so so even as we've gone through this conversation, you do see that part of what uh, uh, you know Christopher has has understood is true. Um, now. Something that I, I want to specify here is, you know, when the counselee may be talking, there may be a certain understanding that you have that, you know, that this, this kind that uh, Christopher has written is that, yes, maybe this is the issue. However, uh, as a counsellor, you've got to be careful to probably not jump the gun or jump the line way ahead of um, of the counselee having understood the problem in itself, okay? So maybe initially when they're talking, you immediately have figured, okay, this is what this could be, that could be it. But what you're attempting to do, how it becomes a personal problem is when you help the counselee themselves to draw it out, to help them draw that out through your conversation, rather than maybe, you know, bringing out something uh, way beforehand till till even maybe before the the counselee is ready for for an understanding such as that like for example <clears throat> you know as samuel bought this out samuel was very clear i think he was he had a lot of clarity about what the issue was but i think as he he spoke we figured out a lot more of clarity there may be there are times that uh, counselees don't have clarity at all but to bring them to that place of clarity may require that you go with them at their pace rather than having it having bought it out for them way before that they have reached that pace so that you know you don't run ahead of them so that you walk alongside with them in their understanding as well so that's a great you know that's a, a great skill if you're able to pick up what could be a, uh, an, an issue, but to also remember to take it at the pace of the counselee so that you can actually help through through that. Okay. So um, anything else? Anything? Any any observation and any question quickly before we move ahead quickly for the for the last two. Okay. All right. So, um, so let, let's let's move on from where we stopped into next. So, I'm hoping that you know, even with Samuel's example, we can uh, uh, take on the the the, re the the next two stages. I don't know if we'll, we'll have time to role play that because that takes you know that's probably going to take much longer time. But uh, let's let's um, uh, let's focus on on at least understanding how it can be done maybe through the uh through um, us discussing in itself we can we can actually figure that out okay so we've we've come to the place of where we've explored we've understood we're going back to dennis's story so that um, uh, you know we, we have some kind of a, a cadence in the way that we are going to go for go go ahead so remember with um dennis the what what we had uh, what we came to is one we did find out what he was going through what he was feeling so we spoke about aggression we spoke about anger we spoke about disappointment we spoke about how 
the feelings, the wrong kind of feelings, were, uh, sorry, the, the, the wrong beliefs or the wrong thoughts that, is come, that has come about. And we identified some of that is where he feels that, um, you know, alcohol will help him get over this disappointment or the wrong belief that, you know, uh, this is one way in which he can get back to his father, that his, or probably the belief that his father does not love him and doesn't care for what his desires or his wishes are. And we see that those kind of beliefs can deal can lead to a wrong strategy. And that strategy being, you know, I will show my father of, of how miserable I am, or I will ensure that, you know, uh, I kind of bring about some kind of a ruin to my life so that so that, you know, my father doesn't get what he wants. So you see that the wrong belief often leads to a wrong strategy. OK, and what we looked in here is is uh, bringing personalizing the problem so where he said that uh, that you know his disappointment is what is leading him into um, into alcohol okay and it is up to him to deal with that disappointment or it is up to him to deal with that um, the beliefs okay so we've come to a place where he's personalized the problem okay and so from there we are looking at a new goal the new goal is to look at how he realizes that alcohol is not the solution towards his anger or his disappointment but looking at how he can deal with it so that's the new goal that we've come about so the second stage of understanding that is self-understanding focuses on goal setting what we are looking at here is how do we bring up, how do we set certain goals? So the first thing that you would do in, in this stage is to help the counselee change those beliefs into thoughts that are in line with the truth. So we've identified those, those beliefs, like, you know, in, in Samuel's case, we said uh, the, the, he wants to change well, the, the belief was or you know that his dad has a certain belief he has a certain belief okay so the 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 final uh, you know line that we did come up with or the final understanding that we came up with is that he wants to bring about a change in the way he discusses this with his father not in a place where he's disrespectful yet be in a place of bringing about critical change to the system of the church. Now, that's something that he wanted to achieve or he'd like to achieve. So that's that becomes Samuel's new goal. OK, or for Dennis, the goal here is to change those problem causing beliefs, which was that alcohol could take away the pain. OK, into something that is that is uh, that is truth, which is that he needs to face up with that disappointment. It is to change those beliefs that alcohol will take away the pain, change that belief into something else that is the truth. Or uh, another example is following a dream alone will not make me feel fulfilled, significant and worthwhile. So to under, to help change that belief or to, to bring about another, another another change of belief that, you know, maybe parents have good intentions for them. Parent, my father does not have a good intention for me. It's probably to change that belief or um, to, to change the belief that, you know, my father hates me and does not want me to have uh, the desires that, that I want. So some of those beliefs are things that you would confront and you would help to change so it really depends on what belief the client brings the counselee brings about okay so what i've stated here is many beliefs that that may require a change so those are the beliefs that we help to focus on and we help to bring about as to what are some of those beliefs that the counselee can change or or can bring about that change now how do you change those wrong beliefs you remember we spoke about that in our previous class of counseling uh, a model of counseling the abcde model so you take that certain belief that uh, the the counselee brings about and changing so to remember that just changing the beliefs can be extremely powerful and can can bring about a huge difference in in your process in in your in your counseling process as well as in the life of the of the individual themselves so for example uh for dennis here this belief that alcohol will get over my pain or my disappointment in itself is a belief that seems to be etched in 
okay so he identifies you help him to identify that belief okay that basic wrong belief of the of uh, of what he's thinking of and you come to a place of working with him to dispute that belief because beneath every problem or all pro uh, beneath all problem causing beliefs there is a something that needs to be exposed or something that needs to be disputed okay so now now i'm i'm making a, a you know a hypothetical guess here and this may not be samuel's case but i'm just making a hypothetical guess like probably the belief some some of the beliefs that um, uh, you know samuel could be holding or his father uh, yeah we had samuel's case so samuel could be holding is that i um, you know, I I should probably get um, my father to be in line with my understanding. Probably that. Now, again, this is a hypothetical one. Okay, maybe there's a belief that I should get my father to believe uh, the way that I see church or the way that I see um, uh, uh, you know church should come about. Okay, so that could be a belief that he's probably holding on to. That's not working in favor of of him and his relationship with his father so if he were to identify that belief maybe you dispute help to dispute that and probably the way that you dispute is to to again to explore to see is how much would you be able to change the belief of your father how much would you be able to um uh, you know reinvent what your father believes in okay and what would it mean to accept the belief that your father has okay so so that again that's where uh, you come to a place of disputing that belief because what you're doing is encouraging them to dispute something that is creating a tension or a, or, a, or an issue between him and his father this is specifically with the second part which he said you know being critical of uh, of of what his father believes in and that as a result could probably come about as being critical of him as a person or being disrespectful of him as a person okay so again this is just hypothetical i'm just i've just made that up it's probably not even samuel's case but just bringing it up so that you know you have an understanding of of how that some of these wrong beliefs or or erroneous beliefs or beliefs that you hold on to can can often um, set the pattern in your own behavior okay the next would be to replace it with a with a true belief or that which is in harmony with god's word and we we see that here in um, uh, in uh, uh, dennis's case is you are changing your you're going to dispute the belief so maybe certain questions of uh, you know you've probably chosen alcohol to get over your pain and disappointment do you think that really builds such an outcome do you think that really is helping you to do that so then you are helping him recreate that disputing that and getting him to find replace it with a new belief either with god's word or either with with something that he begins to understand so through your uh, further exploration here you're not you may not be the one who's giving the advice you can give a suggestion saying that you know the some of these beliefs can be turned around or can be replaced by by god's word like like for example let's suppose if he's a believer you would say you would you would bring about god's word and says you know what does how do, how does god uh, bring about um uh, promises in his word of how one can deal with their disappointment or or uh, regrets okay or uh, what are some other ways that you could look at how um, you could deal with your disappointment so he may come in about as you know if i if i were to maybe talk to talk to somebody a little bit more about what i'm disappointed at maybe i will come to accept some of these things or um, maybe if i do focus on uh, you know doing something a lot more healthier it may help me to uh, to calm down my disappointment or if i can come about to to think about that uh, you know just being a rock star is uh, is is the biggest goal of my life to understand that that may not that that's not what re defines me that's not what defines who i am but there is something else that defines me so helping the individual to come out with with a alternate and healthier and a, and a truer belief 
is what you are attempting to do within within this this pattern of goal setting okay now once you're able to get there remember that that the counselee, when when they begin to move away from that negative belief into looking at a more positive belief, it can bring about emotions. It can bring about a sense of, you know, further anger. Like, you know, why should I do that? Why, why should I be the one who's changing my beliefs? Why can't the other person do it? So there can be difficult emotions that may arise as they are going through this process of of um, dealing with 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 a new set of beliefs with coming coming to an understanding of a new belief like for example again this is again hypothetical with what i'm what i'm saying about in samuel is maybe he uh, you know the, the belief that you know i uh, how can i be less critical to my father all right now that ag that again is like a pull for him is saying that okay how what can i do to stay critical to the system but stay loving to my father okay and maybe that creates a sense of you know why why should i why 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 should i be in a place that i compromise on something i compromise on uh coming to church all because you know it it helps my father feel um, you know less critical maybe it's something like that so there again there are certain emotions that that do come up and that's what you would help to help to deal with sorry i think there are some questions or where i'm not able to see my um okay i think they're just observations sorry yeah so uh, so that's that's what you know if if samuel's going through that understanding that okay maybe i need to work on how i can be more respectful maybe through my words through my behavior i i express criticality to my father how is it that i can change that belief and work on something else can create a certain sense of maybe you know a feeling of of loss for oneself a feeling that you know i may have to keep giving in but it it is the truth that when whenever there there is a change of a certain pattern of beliefs to something that is new we may think that is very releasing but sometimes it may not be it can, because you are dealing with those emotions of of the self and saying you know why should i be the one who changes uh, a thought process in order to uh, you know to make someone else feel better or to make my situation better so but what you're doing is you're helping them handle those emotions of what can come about now and what can come about in the future as you're doing that so you help them face it you help them label the emotion that they're going through like for example what would it mean to you uh dennis when when you begin to uh change this belief that your father is concerned about your future right so he may come up saying that you know i just i just feel still very angry th at, of of having to let go of those beliefs because that's and that's when he begins to see that that's what he's been holding on to but helping them face it uh, you know it, once they begin to face it they begin to see what's going on inside of them and and they and they are able to process those those emotions so when they begin to identify that you know it's those negative emotions that keep them trapped they be, they begin to uh, work on them and also to help them to discover how did these negative emotions come about what are those emotions that's that's uh, that's uh, being raised up because those negative emotions will take you back to your wrong goal right which is in dennis's case is alcohol the more negative emotions that's coming up the more it's getting you back to your wrong goal so you're you're helping them to come face to face with that helping them to choose to express a, a, a negative feeling um, in a way you know so that they're able to process it so they they express those negative feelings so what you're helping what you're helping dennis do is to process this the the negative emotions that they come through they're helping to process what is um uh, uh you know what what has been the roots of those those uh, negative feelings and coming to a place of dealing with that and and one way of doing that is to express it express these emotions in a way so that they can come to a place of settling okay so um as, as you work through that th then you move on to the to the next place of helping them make changes in that new understanding like 
for example, in Dennis's case, there is um, uh, that there, there is a new understanding of how uh, you know how he needs to deal with that anger and that resentment towards his father. Okay, that he may be realizing that his addiction is causing him more harm, or he may um, uh, you know come to a place of of understanding that uh, uh, that that. Even even this wrong thought of or the wrong belief that um, the more that I get into alcohol, the more that I am showing vengeance on my father. So all of this, what you're doing is you're emphasizing the importance of change, and you are doing it in those different five areas that we spoke about. Okay, so you're you're not just helping them change the belief not just helping them work through those negative emotions they're going through but you're making the, the the change of these beliefs reflect in their new understanding and in how in all of these five areas in the physical area in the volitional relational uh, emotional as well as the spiritual area so in the physical area you're coming to a place of encouraging him to uh, to use the body carefully to recognize that the body is being um, uh, affected and so you know for a believer what you are helping them do is to you, you're changing the system of belief that the body is you know is that is of uh, is a temple of the holy spirit and and what you're doing through that counseling is to ensure that they understand that belief in such a way that you reflect change in that okay so when they understand that they're holding a wrong belief that you know it's okay to do anything with my body it's my body even that that understanding of just changing it to to know that you know this body is the temple of the holy spirit that in itself brings about a change in the way that they deal with their body or let's say in the emotional part of it where you're helping the the uh, the uh, you know Dennis here to get in touch with his feelings that may be so deeply ingrained will help him so the more that he's in touch with it the more that he labels it but the more that he understands that yes I have feelings of uh, anger towards my dad I have feelings of um, uh, you know vengeance towards him the more that he understands it the more that he's able to work through it so look back at you know what Samuel said I think he put it up on the chat here is that that moment of where he understood that how am I what can I do to change my critical spirit just knowing or just identifying that there is that spirit within me in itself brought about a reason to say okay I need to change the way that I I feel about this or, or the way that I interact with my with my father in the way that these emotions keep coming up so just coming to that place of getting in touch with the feelings helps them to uh, commit to an, uh, a place of change then is the rational being we, we spoke about changing beliefs okay how that uh, just renewing your mind of the beliefs that you have in itself brings about brings about a change so for Dennis just this feeling that alcohol uh, you know helps me deal with my disappointment just understanding that uh, you know that that is not true that cannot be true it, it has to there has to be something more or identifying that it is God's word that brings about uh, a change in the disappointment or maybe you know um, uh, uh, engaging in 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 other areas where you can work through the dis disappointment or talking to somebody about it talking to a counselor about it can help to work through that disappointment is the rational part of it the volitional part of it is where you're helping the counselee see that they have the power to choose and no matter what the feelings are that's influencing them they have the power to change what they want so like for Samuel it, it's probably just to understand that he has the choice of the next time he's in interaction with with his father how is he going to say something what is he going to say how is he going to express it maybe asking himself does this sound critical is this something that is timely to really bring about to my father so that is the choice that that you help to bring about that change and lastly of course the spiritual part of it where you are getting them to um, a place of understanding that or, or, or to an uh, uh, to an awareness that that there there are these three things that are affected either your security your self worth or your significance right and to help them believe that the more that you you find security significance and value in Christ the importance of how 
you base your life on something else diminishes. So that importance of the change in thinking is based on that foundation that, you know, my inner security, no matter what I receive or what I achieve or where I am, my inner security or my significance comes from, from God himself. So, so you come to a place of helping the, the counselee make commitment in these five areas. Now, remember, um, like in Samuel's case, there was there wasn't a commitment for the physical. There's nothing there, right? I mean, in his case, there's no no change area in the physical. There's there's no relevance there over here. Okay, uh, there's there is a change maybe in the emotional part of it, the way that he feels about it. There is a change in the way in the rational part of it. There may be change in the way of the volitional part of it. Here again, uh, there isn't any 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 specifically with spiritual here, right? But what you would focus on maybe in Samuel's case is more emotional, rational, and volitional. Okay, so remember that it's not that all five areas probably requires a, a, an area of change, and it that really matters on how much you've assessed and seen what is it that's causing that deep sense of. Uh, distress or deep sense of a problem that that he, that is going through. But here in Dennis's case, all five uh, areas of functioning is what will definitely require that change. Okay. Now, after your goal setting, so you you've kind of figured out what are steps that you would need to look at. Now comes to the place of action where you are initiating action, or here is where the actual uh, you know the the rubber meets the road. This is the place where you're actually going to start reaching um, more actionable, tangible, uh, um, act, uh, uh, um, tangible items to act on. So now for Dennis's case, you've identified maybe physically, probably he needs to get rid of his al alcohol. OK, uh, emotionally, that there needs to be, uh, you know, the, that disappointment and that anger needs to be dealt with. Rationally is changing those set of beliefs that he may have, which could be, you know, my father doesn't care for me or, um, you know, I, I, I only if I reach a rock band, will I reach a place of fulfillment? OK, volitionally is helping him make those right choices. And spiritually, of course, it is to track him back into what his true place of identity is that a career doesn't uh, doesn't dictate his identity or the way that the father sees him doesn't dictate his identity is probably the broad goals that you would have come up with okay now when you identify a goal um what what are you uh, the, the next step is to move them and and find out the steps to reach that goal and i know a lot of you you know would have come through these smart goals okay they are more you you use them a lot even in management where you specify the goals so like for example in uh, in in uh, uh dennis's case when you are specifying goals for his physical self is to to come maybe physical self is to completely get rid of alcohol maybe he says okay i i want to get rid of alcohol so that's his specific goal is not to drink okay so you've specified it that i want to stop drinking not reduce drinking maybe that's not his goal okay but to stop drinking measurable it should be a goal that is measurable it's something that you should be able to see if there has been a progress it should be achievable Okay, it's not something that you do uh, that 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 seems very unrealistic. Okay, or unachievable. So uh, achievable and realistic, you know, need to come together. That's something that you can hold tangibly to, and something that is time bound. Now, uh, now, now, this can be even looked at at let's say uh, even the emotional. Uh, uh, area of functioning where there are certain specific goals that you know I want to work on the disappointment and the anger that I'm feeling okay a, a measurable how does it become measurable is um, by the end of this week the way that I interact with my father will help me see if the, that disappointment and anger has come down Okay, and uh, one measurable measurable goal is, you know, I would like to come back and speak to the counselor regularly so that I am able to deal with that. Okay, deal with with the emotions that I'm going through. What is achievable is maybe he would say, in order to maybe by the end of two weeks, 
um, I, I show some kind of a progress in the way that uh, I, I feel and as well as the way that I may be doing my work, maybe going just back to college, because when I'm disappointed is when I go and drink. But if I have someone to talk to, this with somebody, I feel in a better state of mind and I feel a little bit more motivated to go back to college. So, you know, these, these are again, very, very interlinked. Okay. But that's how you would work through these goals. Are they realistic? Is this something that is achievable? Are you getting him to, you know, get rid of his disappointment and anger within two days? That may not be realistic because this has been maybe a problem over the last three, four years. And we need to be realistic in the way that we work through it. And of course, it has to be time bound. So you're giving, you're working out a specific time as to how you would want him to get rid of his alcohol. How is it that, you know, what are the, some of the things that he can work through? Now, this is just an example of some of the steps that uh, that this person uh, took. OK, so in his drinking, he decided that he will go for a rehabilitation program. OK, that's that's a step he took in physically dealing with with him. OK, so he so the question was, would he join an alcohol anonymous group or will he join a, 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 like a Bible study group? Now, that 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 was something that that was that was in discussion. So a rehabilitation program is a step that he took that that this is something that i will do uh, the the next step was how am i going to handle the stress uh, the stress over here could be the pressure at uh, pressure at school or pressure from the from the principal. What were some ways that he would like to handle that stress? So some of the uh, issues of I mean some of the ways uh, thought about the the steps that were thought about is uh, you know go talking to the principal and the, and because this is a real case I'm I'm telling you what actually happened. Go talking to the principal about uh, an apology letter and uh, you know uh, asking his uh, his help. Uh, to to give him another chance to work through um, a semester uh, another way to handle stress is to uh, you know is to uh, while he's in college to meet with with a mentor there so that uh, you know that at any point of time there are other factors that happen in college there is someone he can connect to okay so that was that was the second goal that was there then the next goal was hobbies what else could he do in order to engage himself? So either joining a sports club in college or uh, join, uh, uh, starting maybe, you know, a music class. These, these were, again, other steps that he decided. The fourth one was, how does he spend the weekends? Um, how, what, what would he do to keep himself away from the the temptation to go back into drinking so you know to identify a friend group that didn't drink or to identify uh, a, a system or a network system that was more helpful for him so that this was something that we attempted to try with regard to more tangible goals the next one was to be able to changing the thought process okay um the, to change the thought process is to one to write down the negative thought process. So we got Dennis to write down what his negative belief systems was and how he could replace that. So that becomes an active process. That again becomes another action point that you know your thought process is something that requires to be changed, just like how other physical aspects need to be changed. So they're writing down the thought process and replacing it with, with the truth, or in a believer's case, with the with God's word that is the truth. being made in order for change to be sustainable it needs to have a reinforcement there needs to be certain rewards now in dennis's case um you know we looked at how there could be support people for him like if he was abstinent for two weeks um what is the kind of support that he could get to to help him uh, rally through that difficult uh, through that difficult point of time okay there was an accountability partner that that he was engaged with this was mainly in college where he was engaged with like like a counselor there who was who was helping him uh, to go through week after week so this the reinforcement was every um, you know every two weeks that that he would go without alcohol there would be some kind of a reinforcement that's given the re
taking a place of uh, um, you know giving maybe within his class really um, uh, looking at his progress and uh, helping him feel better about himself you know so 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 what what the counselor did there was uh, got him attached to a college group and helped the college group to to encourage him to you know to uh, to get him to join in their group and uh, you know have an outing with with him so that was that was what was was a reinforcement that was there and of course to be able to review that uh, periodically and give any kind of a reward that may be uh, uh, that be there so this was one of the, the one of the steps they found an accountability partner of the counselor and and a, so it is a friend so it was account uh, was a counselor there that that helped him through that and it is to stay clean if he stayed clean for two weeks then the then the reinforcement was to go out for a movie with his friends and this was again like i said you know instituted by the counselor along with that group of friends to help him in that journey okay the the next thing you do is yes you implement these steps so these the first part of it is more formulating it saying that okay if this is what happened uh, this if you do these things this is what will go by so then you implement it and you help with every kind in every step that he needs to go it help him with those resources that he may require okay and so here the first step for Dennis was to go back and to read about the support group and decide which one to join. Uh, so there was a time bound to that. When are you going to do it? How is it that he's going to do it? Who are the friends that's going to be there? So this is just the example of how Dennis took on uh, initiating that action for himself. So you involve the counselee in a way that helps him to work through that action point or through that intervention. So once uh, all the steps are Im implemented, you get back on a feedback, okay? And um, figuring out how the entire uh, action part has worked with all the goals that, that uh, the counselee set with the counselor, with all the steps that they went in, how is it going? So there is, an, there, is a, there is a general loop that takes place. Every time there's a new goal that is placed, every time there's a new action point that's placed, there, there, hap, there needs to be a feedback where there is one, a recognition for what he's done well, and also, or confrontation in case he slips back. Suppose, you know, he was doing well for two weeks. The third week, he slipped. He went back into drinking. Maybe that's that's the place that you confront and figure out what brought him back. What was the trigger point into uh, going back into alcohol again? Maybe it was, you know, I just felt disappointed once again. So you may have to rework that goal once more. Go back to that emotional place and help him work through that. So I think one thing that I want to mention here is when a counselee slips that has nothing to do with your efficiency or uh, you know the process of counseling counseling is all about trial i mean sorry uh, recovery in counseling also is about trial and error there are times that they are going to fall back okay but that doesn't that, that doesn't uh, at all express that the counseling relationship has failed it's it's some it's it's a process we fail we succeed we fail we succeed but the idea is to stand alongside with the counselee till a point of time that they feel confident to work on their own or let's say in this place maybe he went through a negative uh, spiral of thinking okay so you go back have a con you know have a caring confrontation and bring them back in track to the goal that that uh, you have initially instituted so here again the example is um why was there a slip up why why was there a relapse so you're trying to find out what went wrong okay and how you can avoid those those slip ups maybe there was an argument that happened at home and that was the reason for a slip up okay and so you you look back at how is it that those things can be prevented or you look back of, of whether you know in this case whether the sports or the hobbies didn't work out maybe he 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 refused to go for the for those hobbies or for those uh, extracurricular activities that kept him back at home and you're kind of actually working out to see how that how that can further um, you know what went wrong that 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 didn't um, help in that system 
that that he was going through so you, you find that out what what have been some of those issues in in all of those areas what have been some of those issues and then finally when there is a a momentum that is reached is when you will come into um, uh, uh, a termination so here again who decides to terminate so generally you know it is the counselee who decides to terminate when they feel ready or if the counselor does see that the that the engagement is being too dependent or that it is coming to a place of redundancy that's when a counselor can um, can initiate uh, uh, a conversation about about uh, termination and of course what does the counselor do is you express that you are ready at any point of time that they that they may need a follow up or any kind of a future future session that may that may come by okay so so in short this is how a process of counseling does happen okay we we move from one step into the other um now like i said you know it, it's very hard to role play all of these stages in one and a lot of times it's very organically done however um if you have a broad understanding that you know once you've explored it you come to a goal that you would want to fit in which is where we stopped with samuel and then starting on some of that goal you know how can we work through that goal what are some of the things that you can intervene some of the action points that you can work on so that you know you you're you're helping the person come back to a place of better functioning in those five areas okay that's the goal that should be the final goal to restore them back to the image remember we spoke about the image and this image is in these five areas so as we said it really depends on who the person is the counselor is when they are believers yes the spiritual part of it gets uh, you know is something that we work with uh, but when they are unbelievers it gets very difficult to work on that but nevertheless we bring them to a place of understanding that there are spiritual issues that could that's leading the problems into an emotional or a behavioral concern okay um all right we have we have one minute left but i'm i'm open for any kind of questions is there yeah and anyone anyone's question uh sorry i think there are some questions here samuel you've asked a question i'm just going to look through that uh in Samuel's case, wouldn't church attendance be a physical aspect? Um, no. What is the physical aspect is all what that has to do with the body. So that's the physical aspect. Church going at church attendance uh, has a lot to do with. Um, uh, no, church attendance doesn't have to do with the physical aspect. Church attendance has a lot to do with what you're going through emotionally you know your interaction with what you are feeling as you are sitting in that church so it has to do with your your dealing with your own emotions as you are there a sense of you know maybe a sense of dissonance a sense of disinterest a sense of anger all of that is coming from your emotional sense so that's the aspect that we may need to deal with i hope that's clear uh, samuel and you've written and also being a part of a church is essential for spiritual growth so that so would that be the spiritual aspect too because one concern that samuel's father may have is that his son is not attending church will hamper his spiritual health that's his father's concern is that samuel's concern does samuel feel that uh, or think that going to church is what makes him identify his relationship with god or is it something else so it may be samuel's father's concern but not really samuel's uh, concern uh, at least that's that's the way that that was assessed that going to church does not make you feel as if you have a relationship with god that you the concern here for samuel is what he's seeing in church is um is something that that doesn't doesn't sit well right with with his understanding or the way that church should be being played out however his father sees it like that but we are dealing with samuel as a as the counselee here not his father i hope that clarifies that yes yes it does Pastor. yes okay yes. yeah 
So any questions here? I uh, I don't know if you all just feel this is like, you know, there's too much of information. Everything no. is out there. I, I do have a question, uh, Pastor, yeah. uh, around yeah. goals, around goals. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, if I can say but that I don't feel like, uh, like this, the, um, especially to deal with, like I, I can see the value of smart goals and how in a corporate setting, work related, and even for something more tangible, like I want to score good grades or I want to lose some weight. Um, you know, how smart goals are uh, are a really good tool. Um, but for counseling, for a person struggling with uh, spiritual bondages, uh, spiritual freedom, um, or, or even, yeah, like, uh, and they, they could be some outputs like, uh, you know, some something like a person stops drinking. Uh, so those those would be, I think, very evident as as change begins to happen. But uh, like in the session itself, uh, putting like so we, we identify Dennis as um, you know an angry person who is addicted to alcohol. Uh, and, uh, you know, the goal is to change and restore Dennis back to the image that God created him to be. So that if, if that's the eventual, that's the big goal. Uh, right away, putting it in, in the smart category, you know, making realistic, measurable, specific goals. Um, it, that, so that part is a little disconnected for me. Um, okay. Because I, I'm not just looking at solving his... Um, Addiction. Probably. Yeah, yeah. So if 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 I'm limiting to just solving his addiction, maybe you know it mm. it makes sense to to make it smart code. But if I'm looking, or uh, and that's what I think uh, I'm being trained as 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 a counselor, which is not just to to quick fix a problem, but to you know eventually you know bring about a bigger change or reconciliation. Uh, with the creator so so for that somehow putting it as measurable specific realistic goals is that that's a little bit of disconnect that i'm having okay so so um uh, so let's look in dennis's case let's just look at two aspects of it one is where we are looking at his addiction and second is let's say we're looking at his thoughts okay now how uh, we identify that there are certain specific thoughts that that is not helpful. So you've identified that this is a thought that isn't helpful. So that becomes a very specific goal. Okay. Now, how does it become measurable? Now, remember, you're not. I mean, you're not writing this down. But then I think it's in your conversation with the client, with the counselee, you are bringing this up and say, okay, how can you identify that um, you know that when you work on this thought or when you change this thought what will you see as an outcome or as a result so that's what you're helping the counselee to to understand that um, the more that I work on this thought I will see this kind of a result okay so measurable may be something like he may say uh, the more that I uh, you know probably focus on God's word I will begin to maybe every morning that I get up I'm not getting up with this feeling of a disappointment so that kind of becomes like a measurable I know it doesn't seem as if you can touch or feel but what you're doing is helping the counselee see by working on this what are you expecting to see okay or attainable or uh, let's say realistic so what would you like to do to ensure that you work on this every day so that it becomes uh, it th that you have an uh, outcome to it so like realistic is maybe um, you know you bring up uh, someone who's having a negative thought and saying okay every morning that i that i get up i am going to you know, uh, put this verse over there and I'm going to read it two, three times before I go, right? Because that I know will begin to work within my spirit and I will begin to see an outcome for it, okay? Like a time bound, what do we mean by time bound is, is this something you would like to do every day? Is this something that you're going to do once in a week? Is this something that you're going to do twice in a week? Why this SMART goals 
become uh, useful. I know it doesn't look tangible, but it becomes useful is because you are building a plan with the counselee. Because without a plan, if you're not going to be helping the counselee have a plan, they are going to very well not do it. Like, you, you know, so if, if you're going to say, okay, I need to renew my mind, but the work of the counselee is to help and say, okay, you're going to renew your mind. Great. How are we going to do it? What are you going to do it? What are you going to do? When are you going to do it? Um, uh, what is the outcome that you will see after you do it? And that becomes your smart goals, where you're actually teasing out a certain discipline in as best tangible form as possible. So that becomes important because if you leave the counselee saying, okay, this is a belief you have, it's a wrong belief, and you got to work on this belief, that's it. You've it, it just becomes like an intellectual understanding. It doesn't become personal. It doesn't get integrated into your system. And that's why the, the umbrella of SMART goals helps because you actually help to work out maybe a discipline or a system in doing that. Okay, when I mean by time bound, it's not that, okay, by the time it's two weeks, you, you've, you, know, you have your sense of security and love. That's not what I meant or what I mean. What, what it means is how... How often are you going to do it? What is the discipline that you're going to take to do it? What are some of the scripture that you will you will do? So that becomes more of your smart goals. Was that clear, Samuel? Yes, yes, Pastor. I think, yeah, yeah, for me, the confusion was putting a deadline. So that now that you say like there's no deadline to it, but it's yeah. the frequency yeah. that we're talking about, I think that makes more sense. Right. OK. Great. Okay. Thank you all so much. And I know it's been a long two hours. Can I please request somebody to close in a word of prayer? Um, any, anybody, anybody uh, quickly, please jump in and close with a word of prayer. I'll pray. Let's pray. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, we thank you for this morning and we pray, Jesus, that you, what you've learned will stick in our heart, Lord, and we, even in our everyday conversation, as we talk to people, as we meet people, our families, our friends, let these skills, Lord, be put into practical and let us learn more and more. Be with us until we meet again next week. In, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Mangi. Thank you all. God bless you. We'll meet again next week. God bless. Bye-bye. Thank you, Pastor. Bye. Thank you, Pastor. Bye. 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 Bye.